Good morning, students. Welcome back to our English class. Today we are going to read chapter one, and the name of the chapter is "The Best Christmas Present in the World," which is in our Honey Dew book. So, students, let us begin with the chapter. As you all know, we are inculcating two core values, Dania core values, with the chapters in every subject. So. the two core values which we are going to inculcate which we are going to put in our students are happiness and growth mindset happiness because the poet after yes so as you can see the name of the poet is michael morfogo and he has given the chapter and the name of the chapter is the best christmas present in the world so you can see i spotted i is the author that is mark hogel who is the writer of this chapter so i spotted spotted means saw i spotted it in a junk shop in bridgeport a roll top desk so you can see the picture of the roll top desk how it looks it is shown in the picture so the man said it was early 19th century and oak i had wanted one but they were far too expensive expensive means very costly this one was in a bad condition the roll top in several pieces one leg clumsily mended scotch bark scotch bark means there were marks of bird all down one side it was going for very little money that means it was for sale and it was everyone wanted it in a less money i thought i could restore it restore means repair it i is for the author so you can see the picture of the author as it is shown in the picture so the picture of the author is michael morfogo you can see the picture of michael morfogo that is the author of the lesson the best christmas present in the world you can see the picture how he is restoring how he is mending repairing the table it would be a risk a challenge but i had to have it i paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage I began work on it on Christmas Eve. I removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawer. The veneer, veneer means the polish, had left it almost everywhere. Means the polish of the table. It looked like water damage to me, as if the water had damaged the wood. Both fire and water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. so it is the damage so the last drawer was struck fast it was very tightly struck i tried all i could ease it out gently in the end i used brute force brute means all my force extra force i struck it sharply with the side of my fist and the drawer flew upon to reveal a shallow Face underneath a secret drawer. You can see it, students, in the picture. The secret drawer. There was something in there. I reached it and took out a small black tin box. Cello tape to the top of it was a piece of lined note paper, and written on it in shaky handwriting, Jim's last letter received January twenty fifth, nineteen fifty. to be buried with me when the time comes i knew as i did it that it was wrong of me to open the box but curiosity got the better of my scruples scruples means without thinking just to do it it usually does inside the box there was an envelope the address read mrs jim macpherson 12 copper beeches bridport dorset 
I took out the letter and unfolded it. It was written in pencil and dated at the top December 26, 1948. So now you can see the picture of the trunches. Trunches means where the soldiers hide themselves. Dearest Connie, what was written in the letter? Dearest Connie, I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing to taking up our positions in our trunches. Trunches is the long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from the enemy. You can see the picture of the trunches. So it is a deep ground ditches. Yesterday morning, Christmas morning, that was Christmas morning, it was crisp and quite all about as beautiful a morning as I have ever seen, as cool and frosty as a Christmas morning should be. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it, but the truth I am ashamed to say is that Fritz, Fritz is the name given for a German soldier. Uh, is that Fritz began it, first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite. Then they were calling out to us from across, no man's land, happy Christmas, happy Christmas. Tommy, Tommy is again a common name given to the British soldier. So Fritz is the name given to the German soldier and Tommy is the name given to the British soldier. Happy Christmas, when we had got over the surprise, some of us shouted back, same to you Fritz, same to you. I thought that it was, that it would be that was the end of the matter. We all did. But then suddenly one of them was up there in his grey coat and waving a white flag, don't shoot lad. Someone shouted and no one did. Then there was another frizz up on the parapet and another Keep your heads down. Parapet, as you can see, it is the, as the arrow is going on in the picture. Yes, parapet is the, you can see, it is shown. So you can see that the parapet is the, Parapet, it's a, it is a mark, it is a sand you can see on the ground. And another, keep your head down. I told the men, it's a trick, but it wasn't. It was not a trick. And you can see that, yes, parapet is a lining, it is a kind of wall, you can see there. So, what actually happened that day was the Christmas day and the soldiers, the Fritz as well as the Tommy, they wanted to celebrate Christmas without any fighting, without any war. So they were greeting each other with Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. One of the Germans was waving a bottle above his head. It is Christmas day, Tommy. We have such nap. Such nap is it is a German drink made from the grape. We have sauces. We meet you. Yes. By this time, there were dozens of them walking towards us across no man's land and not a rifle between there. That means there was no war. So we have seen, we have learned, students, you have learned that the Daniel core value of growth mindset and happiness. So how does this happiness come? Because when there was a war, lots of men had to sacrifice their life. So now the, both of the team, both of the soldiers, both of the country's soldiers, they are ready to have a Christmas celebration. So little Private Morris was the first up. Come on boys, what are we waiting for? And then there was no stopping then. I was the officer. You can see both the soldiers, the Fritz and the Tommy. I was the officer. I should have stopped them there. 
and then I suppose, but the truth is that it never even occurred to me I should. Means both the soldiers wanted peace. They don't wanted. They don't want any kind of war. All along their lines and ours, I could see men walking slowly towards one another, grey coats, khaki coats, meeting in the middle, and I was one of them. I was part of this. In the middle of the war, we were making peace. You cannot imagine, dearest Connie, my feelings as I looked into the eyes of the Swiss officer who approached, approach means to come near, who approached me, hands outstretched. Means he wanted to shake hands with him. Hands full, he said, gripping my hand warmly. Means that soldier's name was hands full. And from Dusseldorf, I play the cello. Cello is a musical instrument like a large violin. You can see the picture of the cello. So this is cello. In the orchestra, Happy Christmas, Captain Jim McPherson, I replied. And a happy Christmas to you too. I am a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. Ah, Dorset, he smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. So, we are just having introduction with both of them. He shared my rum ration and his excellent coffee. And we talked, Connie, how we talked. He spoke almost perfect English. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset. Never even been to England. He had learned all he knew of England from school and from reading books in English. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy. His favorite book, Far From the Madding Throne. So out there in no man's land, we talked of Bathsheba and Gabriel O and Serpent Troy and Dorset. He had a wife and one son born just six months ago. As I looked about me, there were hurdles of khaki and grey everywhere. All over no man's land, smoking, laughing, talking, drinking, eating. So you can see the picture of Thomas Hardy. Yes, it is the name of the book. Gabriel of the novel hero. Gabriel of is a farmer, shepherd, and ballad. Then Bathsheba Everdeen, the beautiful young woman at the center of the novel. You can see the picture of her. And Sergeant Troy, he is handsome, vain, young, and irresponsible. Great cores were dumped in piles to make goalposts. And the next thing we knew, it was Tommy against Prince out in the middle of no man's land. Hansful and I looked on and cheered, clapping our hands and stamping our feet to keep out the cold as much as anything. Because that time was a cold of winter. There was a moment when I noticed our breath mingling in the air between us. He saw it too and smiled. Jim McPherson, he said after a while, I think this is how we should resolve this war. A football match, no one dies in a football match. No children are orphaned. No wives become widows. I would prefer cricket, I told him. Then we Tommies could be sure of winning, probably. We laughed at that and together we watched the game. Sad to, sad to say, Connie, Fritz won two goals to one. So who, who won? Fritz win. And but as Hans Wolf generously said, our goal was wider than theirs, so it wasn't quite fair. The time came and all too soon when the game was finished, the sushnap and the rum and the sauces had long since run out and we knew it was all over. I wished Hans well and told him I hoped he would see his family again soon, that the fighting would end and we would all go home. That means there was a risk. Yes, but the poet's, everyone's growth mindset was there. 
that they have planned for a football friendly match instead of a war because no one dies in a match and no weapons nothing and the matter is solved so there is a happiness after the solvement of any matter without any war and without any fighting i think that is what every soldier wants on both sides hans wolf said take care jim macpherson i shall never forget this moment nor you he saluted and walked away from me slowly unwillingly i said he turned to wave just once and then began one of the hundreds of gray coated men drifting back towards their trenches so you can see trenches it is the ditches in the ground so now both of the soldiers both the country soldiers were happy because the matter was sort out without any sacrifice of any men's life the night back in our dug house the house the trenches the place where they hide themselves we heard them singing a carol and singing it quite beautifully it was stilly night silent night our boys gave them a rousing chorus of while shepherds watched we exchanged carols for a while and then we all fell silent we had had our time of peace and good will a time i will treasure as long as i live so connie's his husband is also very happy here is connie by christmas time next year this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory i know from all that happened today how much both armies long for peace we shall be together again soon i am sure of it your loving jim so this was written in the letter of dearest connie's husband i folded the letter again and slipped it carefully back into its envelope i kept awake all night by morning i knew what i had to do i drove into bridport just a few few miles away i asked a boy walking his dog where copper beaches was house number 12 turned out to be nothing but a burned out shell the roof gaping the windows boarded up board means it was covered with wooden boards i knocked at the door next door and asked if anyone knew the whereabouts of mrs macpherson oh yes said the old man in his slippers he knew her well a lovely old lady <coughs> he told me a bit muddle headed muddle headed means little bit confused but at her age she was entitled to be wasn't she a hundred and one years old so connie was hundred and one years old she had been in the house when it caught fire no one really knew how the fire had started but it could well have been candles she used candles rather than electricity because she always thought electricity <coughs> was too expensive the fireman had got her out just in time she was in a nursing home now he told me burlington house on the dorchester road on the other side of town i found burlington housing house nursing home easily enough there were paper chains up in the hallway and a lighted christmas tree stood in the corner with a lopsided angle angle on top i said i was a friend come to visit mrs macpherson to bring her a christmas present now we went there to meet mrs macpherson i could see through into the dining room where everyone was wearing a paper hat and singing so the matron matron is the who is the honor who who, who looked after that had a hat on too and seemed happy enough to see me she even offered me a mince pie mince pie is a meat dish she walked me along the corridor mrs macpherson is not in with the others she told me she is rather confused today so we thought it best if she has a good dress she has no family you know no one visits so i'm sure she will be only too pleased to see you 
So now Mrs. Patterson is really waiting for someone to come. She took me into a conservatory with beakers, chairs and potted plants all around and left me. You can see the potted plants. You can see the picture. The old lady was sitting in a wheelchair, her hands folded in her lap. She had silver white hair, pines into a wispy bow. She was gazing out at the garden. Hello, I said. She turned and looked up at me vacantly. Happy Christmas coming, I went on. I found this, I think it's yours. This conservatory means a greenhouse in which plants are arranged in a pleasing manner. You can see the picture of a greenhouse. She had a silver tea. In the picture, you can see the appearance of Mrs. Macpherson. Wispy bun. It is a kind of Judah, you can see. As I was speaking, her eyes never left my face. I opened the tin box and gave it to her. That was the moment her eyes lit up with recognition and her face became subdued with a sudden glow of happiness. She was very happy. I explained about the desk, about how I had found it, but I don't think she was listening. For a while, she said nothing, but stroked the letter tenderly with her fingertips. She reached out and took my hand. Her eyes were filled with tears. You told me you would come home by Christmas, dearest, she said. And here you are, the best Christmas present in the world. She thought that the person, the author was her, her husband. So she was happy. Come closer, Jim, dear, sit down. I sat down beside her and she kissed my cheek. I read your letter so often, Jim. Every day I wanted to hear your voice in my head. It always made me feel you were with me. And now you are. Now you are back. You can read it to me yourself. Would you do that for me, dear Jim? I just want to hear your voice again. I had loved that so much. And then perhaps we will have some tea. I have made you a nice Christmas cake. Marzipam all around. I know how much you love marzipam. Marzipam is a sweet paste of brown almond, sugar and egg white cheese to cover. You can see the picture of the marzipam cake. So now what, what was in the end? Mrs. Macpherson thought that the author who came there to give away the letter. So Mrs. Macpherson thought that the author is her husband. So she was very happy that at last her husband has returned and this was the best Christmas gift for her. So students, I hope you like the chapter, you understand the chapter. We will be back in our next English class. Till then, thank you. Remain at your home. Stay healthy. So thank you. Remain at your home. Stay healthy. And we will be back in our next English class. Bye.